I guess I'll begin right now. Um, hey, everybody, if you don't know me, my name is Brian Breeding. I am a podcast host. I am a geometry artist. And today I am extremely excited to share with you. It's unscripted and it's completely raw and from my heart, but that's how I flow and communicate best. And authenticity is a huge part of my message. So I hope everybody enjoys. I actually want to, um, I want to thank Spencer and I want to thank the entire um, Star Bloom team for putting it together. All right, so let's jump right into it. I want to talk about the Trinity because as a geometry artist, there's something extremely powerful about the shape of a triangle and the doubling of a triangle, which goes into a hexagon or a hexagram. And as I was beginning to understand this shape on a deeper level, I've been trying to put the pieces together. And what I have discovered is this unity between the masculine energies, the feminine energies, and then that gray area that we all try to find within the polarities, within, within everything in life. You know, it's always like this tug of war of trying to find this sense of balance. And I've realized that within the Trinity, there is this equilibrium place that is within every single one of us. And I believe it is the individual person that is in you, that's in me, that's in our friends, our families, all around us that completes this Trinity. So first, um, let me go back to the origin of where all this began in my life. Um, back in 2019, um, I got hit with just everything that was going on with COVID, with everything. I just started diving into more of the... Um, more of the esoteric information that was starting to sprout up everywhere on the internet. And I wanted to just get a sense of understanding because I was questioning life and I was questioning the reality around me. And so I started to look for knowledge. I started to look into alternative things because I was raised um, into Christianity from a young age. And from that place, I wasn't able to fully tap into the power. I mean, I was doing the prayers. I was doing everything right. And for some reason, I wasn't able to, and excuse me, because this is my first time ever talking about this. So let me just like anchor this down. I wasn't able to tap into the power to change my life around me. And that's ultimately what this message is boiling into is how to change our lives within ourselves and then how to change the lives of the world around us. So that's what inspired me to start looking for the knowledge and looking for alternative um, informations. I started looking into, I started looking into Buddhist. I started looking into Hinduism. I started looking into esoteric um, scriptures. And I did not realize that that was going to cost me everything in my life. I mean, beginning that spiritual journey and embarking on that cost like I gave up my career I gave up um my religion and my relationship with God I gave up um my family and I began to just explore and it was so weird because in that season I was like I have no idea what I'm doing but for the first time in my life I was actually like stripping everything away that I've been so identified with and I've been so confident in but like when 20 when 2020 hit and when COVID hit, it was just like, I felt stripped completely naked, completely vulnerable and completely raw. So I went to Greece and I studied with um, a community um, off grid. And there, that's when, my, that's when the beginning of this like metamorphosis season in my life began to change. And it was incredible. I was learning the true nature of what the creator and what source and what universe created this planet for. It wasn't for the superficial nature of society and the movies and all the entertainment. It wasn't for all these things that we enjoy as humans. And I'm not grilling those things in any way, shape or form, but I am, I did want to connect into a deeper part of myself and I wanted to, um, to connect in a deeper part of reality and in a deeper part of what everything was really about here. So when I went to the off-grid community in Greece, I started to understand how abundant and how beautiful and how gracious the creator was, how you can put a seed in the ground without having to go to the grocery store, without having to work in a nine to five job, without, to, without having to stress and do all these things that we're required to do in society. 
And I realized when you just sow the seed and when you're consistently, um, when you consistently show up every day, like everything actually around us works for us. Like this whole experience in this life was always designed for us to live in abundance, to live in unconditional love, to live in peace and to live in community. And it was just such a polarity and it was such a shift from when or from what I was experiencing in society. And what I learned there was started to understand more of the mechanics. And this is the first aspect of the Trinity that I was learning. I was learning the masculine aspect of consciousness, of source, of the creator. And as I began to study more of these esoteric terms of like the universal principles, mentalism, mentalism, um, correspondence, you guys know, them, et cetera. I started realizing, okay, there is a, there is a, almost like a certain law structure that has been given to humanity to follow, not because we are supposed to be compressed by these laws, but that these laws actually serve us. Like if we understood to a degree that what we're experiencing in our life is a manifestation and a reflection of our inner state, then people would be much more conscious and we would be much more intentional about the way we use words about the music we listen to, about the movies we put into ourselves, about everything that we're feeding ourselves. All right, we're 10 minutes, we got, I got time. About everything that we're feeding into ourselves. And so as I was there for nine months, off-grid living, I was integrating and I was learning to embody this truth because it's really hard to actually, um, it's really hard to practice this in society, because there's so many things in society that violate the unit, the seven hermetic principles or the universal laws that just for my story, and my journey, I was taken out of that place and placed somewhere off grid. And for me, I seen it as the beginning of like this cocooning effect I want to happen, this metamorphosis, this childlike in a womb, you know, babies are in a womb because they need to be protected as they develop. And I was recognizing as I was there and shedding off the layers and shedding off the programs that were no longer meant for me in my life into the next season that I was growing into that I started to recognize what Source was doing for me. And so, and to this day, um, and I know this goes for everybody, we're still, it's, it's a continuous journey. Nobody has fully mastered all the universal laws. No one has fully mastered the more masculine principles of consciousness, but then um, this new subject, this new concept inside of me started to be birthed. And that's when I started to understand the feminine qualities of consciousness, the feminine qualities of God. And that subject is called virtues to me. And so I wanna introduce this subject of virtues. We see it in all the enlightened teachers, you know, we see it in Jesus Christ who walks in compassion, walks in unconditional love, walks in grace, walks in peace. And that's something, the reason I categor categorize it as the feminine aspect of the Trinity, because it's not something that the mind can put a true valuation on. In this day and age, we see AI art coming out of nowhere. We see automated things from our computers. We see so much that the machinery can do, but it's more based on the left-minded side of the brain of the hemisphere. It's based on logic and mathematics and analyticals or analytics. And, but it's hard for the, for computers to value, or it's hard for machines to evaluate this principle of grace and love and forgiveness, because that's something from the heart. That's not something that comes from the mind or from a masculine quality. That's something that is another polarity of the force that we see in God. And I believe that is why we see such for, for this last whole age of, um, of Pisces that we're coming out of, we've seen this budding ahead of this tug of war between the masculine trying to dominate the feminine. And now we see the fight back of the feminine trying to, and there's this equilibrium and there's this battle that's trying to find its place. And it's a reflection. If we wanna, if we wanna use the law of correspondence on the macro scale, it's a reflection of humanity at its fullest that for so long, the way society has been wired we have valued um, efficiency. We haven't valued numbers. We haven't valued the more money you can make, the more quality of a life you have, the more better of a person you are. And we were so left-minded or so masculine-minded for so long that now there's this like 
there's this pendulum swing that's happening on the other side. And that is where I currently believe humanity is at. I believe we're trying to find this level balance of these opposing forces. Now, my message is always to bring unity. I'm a biracial, so I've always had this sense of pulling my black side and my white side into trying to find out who I am. And I've come from, like I said, the Christian world, but I was also a recording artist. And it was always throughout every season of my life, I recognized there was this polarity happening. There was always me, me trying to find this sweet spot, this middle spot between these seemingly opposing concepts. And so now that I have stepped into a deeper part of spirituality and I'm recognizing, I'm looking at the the universal principles. I'm looking at these people who are super heady and like they want more knowledge and more knowledge and more knowledge because that's where I was coming from. I realized, wow, when I was seeking all the knowledge and I went so masculine, dominated on this side, I started to abandon some of the virtues and some of the more feminine qualities. And, and so my walk and my story for the last three years have been, where's the equilibrium? Where's the balance for me, Brian Breeding? Where is what is that third part of the trinity that can help me sustain these these two opposing opposing forces in this tug of war sorry i'm just checking my time and so um and so to tie it all in i believe that third aspect of the godhead and you can see it in christianity you can see it in nature you can see it in many different manifestations of source is that you and i are the ones who sets the degree for what is right, for what is wrong, for what is masculine, for what is feminine. And I believe it is within each of our personalities and within each of our own perspectives, we can bring a better sense of equilibrium for the macros of the world and for our own lives, the macros of our, I mean, in the micros of our own lives. And I believe it is our personality that will change the reality of everything that we see that's happening in this day and age. And I believe that that third piece of the Trinity is you. And I believe that's what the symbology is when a man and a woman comes together to make a child. It is, and, and, and again, that you can be masculine, can be a boy, can be a girl, but it, it's, it's the space, it's the gray space that God, consciousness, source has given humanity the free will to choose. And I believe with the gift of free will, with the gift of the balance of masculine and feminine on all levels, whether that's mental, whether that's emotional, whether that's spiritual, it is up to each of us to decide what that will be. And so this message on my heart, I woke up this morning and this message was on my heart to just share and empower everybody who showed up to this event, because I feel that it's something that all of us are constantly trying to find a balance with, and that this spiritual journey has not been easy for everybody. And it's because there's so much, there's so much power behind this. There's so much, 715, there's so much power behind this gift that God has given us, this gift that Mother Earth has given us. If we can truly, if we can truly, ugh, if we can truly tap into that sense of self, I believe the world will radically radically transform and i believe if we can change our personalities i believe our realities will change and i believe it is up to us to continue to be seekers and it's up to us to continue to pursue and make the adjustments on whatever subjects or fields of science or art or music to offer and to bring into this world and so i just want to say for everybody who is a part of this journey for everybody who's alive in this day and age. It's extremely special. This time is like no other. And I know we all feel it. We know that life will never be the same. And we know that when we accept this journey and when we take on the mantle or the torch of enlightenment, that <laughs> we have to balance these principles and these laws with the virtues and with love and with the grace first towards ourselves and towards others. And so that is how I basically want to wrap this message up. Thank you for listening. Um, I know I have five more minutes and I'm not on the telegram. So I just want to um, 
Oof. I want to talk about geometry for a second. If you have not gotten to sacred geometry, it will completely explain, expand your mind and it will come and it'll bring another level to this layer of information that I'm giving you because what geometry is, is the left hemisphere of the brain governs mathematics like we spoke of earlier. It governs the masculine. The right hemisphere of the brain governs art and it governs music and it governs um, color and things in that field. But if we can, but if, when we begin to draw geometry, it is the center point. Geometry stimulates the pineal gland and it merges these two worlds into one. And so it's just, it's everywhere I, everywhere I see in life now, whether it's in music, whether it's just in literally anything, I see, I see that law of gender at play. I see that polarity at play. And then I see the law of rhythm that's trying to find that equilibrium and that sense of um, that sense of balance. And so, oh, I could just, I could go on for so long. I'm so passionate about it. And I think like me being a Libra has played a big part in my influence. And so I'm always here to tell the person and the individual, it is your, you, it is your life. It is your story. It is your history. It is your taste. It is your, your life. It is your dislikes too. Everything that has played a part in your story try to find a way to heal and bring a sense of unity with that relationship or with that history or with that memory or with that vision for your future because that is also a part of the trinity that is a part of your trinity of the godhead of the masculine the feminine and then you and so i just I have three minutes <laughs> time is flying by and so i just want to encourage that For the next year, 2023, I want to encourage everybody in here to begin whatever businesses or to begin whatever art projects or to begin whatever counseling or just to be more expressive in any way, shape or form. Because as we are coming out of this dark age, I see humanity, I see people understanding this. I see people not controlling others as much because we're gonna recognize that the specialness and the uniqueness of every single human that is just balancing these, these two masculine and feminine perspectives, that the world is going to be less about controlling and more about us just moving in sovereignty and, and, and manifesting our dreams and manifesting heaven on earth with a short amount of time we have here. And so I, um, that's my time. That's my time, and I'm going to join um, the server and see if I can come up with anything else that wants to come out in this moment. But, um, oh, I actually want to do my shout outs to Spencer, Junk DNA. Um, he played such a huge part in my awakening in 2019. It was one of the first accounts I recognized when I realized the planet was alive and that it was Mother Earth and that she had a vibration. That is what triggered me from this left minded place of being into like understanding wow, it's not just about Father Sky, it's not about the God out there, but it's about Mother Earth and emphasizing the God in here. And so, I don't know, it's just the way my brain works, but um, <laughs> I just wanted to give my kudos to him. This is my first time actually doing a public presentation, so thank you all for working through with me. I want to plug my podcast. It's called Here I Am with Brian Breeding, and there are about six minutes of these type of rants and just quick little bursts of what's on my heart. So if you don't know about that, please check it out. And I hope you continue to, um, yeah, I hope you continue to follow me on my journey because I'm just going to remain myself. I'm going to remain raw and authentic. And I hope you all do the same. So thank you. <laughs>